This episode of The Corner Office is brought to you by Vistage Worldwide. In business for over 60 years, we exist solely to help high integrity leaders make great decisions that benefit their families, their businesses, and their communities. Hello, San Gabriel Valley. Welcome back to the corner office. I'm happy to have you here. I'm Jackie Kibler, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about the reason for the show, The Corner Office. It truly is to showcase our community through speaking with local CEOs in the area who will share their journey to pass on their successes and obstacles to others, future CEOs, or even people who are trying to go into the industry that they're in. To that end, I would love to introduce you to Mike Schaefer. He's the CEO of Echo Factory based in Pasadena, and he runs a advertising and marketing agency. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so happy you came. So I would love to start out by just sharing a little bit about the Echo Factory, a little bit about what it does, how it started, and then if we could, I'd love to just chat a little bit about the journey that you've been on. Sure, so Echo Factory was started 10 years ago. Um, I started as a creative agency that really focused more on creating work than the media that was placing the, the work for the clients. Um, and so we started doing graphic design and logos and branding and really built it into a full service agency over the last 10 years. Uh, and what we found is, is that if we can get a group of very creative people that are good at problem solving, um, we can do amazing things for, for clients. Great. So you started this. I did. Ten I years did. ago. I did. Was there an impetus actually for starting it? You said that there was a gap that you saw. Uh, yes. Yeah, so before starting Echo Factory, I ran, I started and ran an advertising photography business. Oh. And so I ran that studio and, and was the sole photographer with a couple of employees and I worked for a lot of agencies and so the agencies that I was working with I would just see things that I thought I could I could do it better and I didn't like the way the way that my photography was necessarily coming out in the campaigns um, and then I saw that at the time 10 years ago um, agencies really focused more on the commissions they were getting on the media on newspaper television radio and not on the work and the results um, and so, so I just figured if we could focus on the results and the creative behind it, we could make a better agency. Uh, and one of the things that, that we really saw was the measure of success for clients' campaigns was whether or not the CEO saw their ad on television or saw it or heard it on the radio. And that's a terrible way to, to, to think your advertising is working. Um, but that's just the nature of, of business. Um, and so, so we just, branched out to what started as a photography studio, then turned into an agency and just built from there. Hmm. So I would love to hear a little bit more about, I mean, because I've, I, you know, I've run different organizations and in that I have purchased advertising. And okay. I, I do now purchase advertising with the role that I'm currently in. Yeah. So, and I do, look, I mean, I, I look at return on investment yep. for how many people have called in or emailed or right. whatever based upon whatever media I'm using. But what, as, as from your expertise, what should I be looking for? You should be looking for a return on investment. Um, and ultimately, that's the case. There is a balance from focusing too heavily on a return on investment versus the long-term branding strategy. And mm. um, but that's really what you should be looking for. Uh, and and looking at data, and it's easier now than it's ever been to look at data and actually make dis data-driven decisions. Where 10 years ago there was data, but it still was focused around: Did I see my when I was watching the news, when I picked up the newspaper, when I'm listening to the radio in my car, did I hear my ad? Okay, then, then it must be working. Uh, and so that's, that's the biggest difference. Awesome. So when we think about data, mm -hmm. I'm curious about, I mean, is it, 
I mean, for me, online, right? So you're looking at Google Analytics. Correct. Are there other types of analytics that you look at? There's there's lots of Google Analytics is the main the main one that that we use and a lot of companies use. But open rates for emails, the web traffic that's coming through Google Analytics, the conversion rates that are happening um, from people visiting websites or clicking on an ad or calling in phone tracking. Um, tracking it's it's a very scary thing um, yeah. and and even looking at your social media reports and the engagement around you may have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram or Twitter or even you know Facebook um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's successful you have to look at the engagement rate or people commenting and liking and and being active participants with your brand right right well and it's interesting right so when we look at the different generations, and I'm sure you have to deal with this with the people that you employ and mm -hmm. then also your clients. There's some generational differences where when we look at social media, right. that has become so prevalent. And how do you bring that to your clients? Because I'm sure many of them might not quite understand that. Right. How do you, what, what's your messaging around that? Uh, the biggest thing that we focus on is um, we try to be as transparent as possible with our social media suggestions and advice. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of companies out there and a lot of people that are gaming the system and the and gaming it by buying likes, buying followers. It's turned into an ad platform now. I mean, that's right. that's really what it is. Uh, and if you can say, look, we're, we want you to have honest conversations with the people visiting on social media or seeing your, your content, that's gonna, be gr that's gonna be really great for you long term. Um, but keeping up with the trends, it, it's just, it's a conversation with the clients and under setting expectations early on. That's the biggest, the biggest thing that we try and do. Um, I can't keep up with social media myself anymore. Um, so the people in my office do. I've got that a means lot of people very smart, like me are out. <laughs> yes, no, no. Um, but, but probably the biggest thing now at this very moment is getting clients to understand that it's an ad platform. Um, Advertisers, they typically do a really good job of ruining great things like television with too many ads. Yes. And now social media and Facebook and Instagram and, and Snapchat will be coming and, and ruining it with advertising. And so um, if we can find a way to not ruin it, that would be great. But if we can just have that honest conversation, say, look, think of this as a, a way to talk to your customers as an ad platform, then you know, we think we can be successful. Fantastic, thank you. I, I got very into this, and I, I definitely want to find out about Echo Factory's differentiating factor. Sure. But before we do that, I want to understand your journey. I think it's really cool that you started as a photographer. Like, what? Talk about Mike growing up. I mean, how did you get into all this? Um, that's it's what I think of as a, a long story, but it's probably pretty short. So I started as a photographer. Um, I didn't know what I was gonna do when I went to college. I just bounced around and went to community college and uh, worked at a camera store and then went and worked as an assistant to a photographer. And as a way, and I think this is relevant to entrepreneurs you know, that are now at the age where they're starting their own business, is it was a way for me to not make minimum wage. So I was making minimum wage working at a camera store, went to work for a photographer as an assistant, made, you know, a, not minimum wage, but not much more than minimum wage. And I just decided, well, I can, I have the skills to do what he's doing as a photographer. Why don't I go do that? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I just made the leap and one day said, uh, I'm going to be a photographer now and um, used all the money in my bank account and bought business cards and went and hustled for business. And, and so from that, um, I got a client here, I got a client there, I started, I would get another big client and, and used all the money from each of those projects to sort of grow, buy equipment, eventually bring on employees. Uh, and then later on, about, five, about four years into it, I realized you can only do so much as a sole entrepreneur. Right. Um, if I'm the one doing the sales and I'm the one running the business and I'm the one doing the photography, um, there's only so much I can do and I really love the advertising world and I found out that I like it more than I liked the photography uh, And so I started just going to my photography clients and saying hey I can do Marketing for you as well and a couple of them really appreciated what I had done for them creatively right. on the photography side and took a chance took a chance on us and um, And so I just started an agency same way. I, I just thought I could do it and thought I could do it better 
um, 10 years later, I realized maybe I can't do it necessarily better, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still doing it. Um, but we have, we have some clients that took a chance on us very early on in my photography business and even when I started Echo Factory that are still with us 10 years later. And I think um, the customer services um, and our dedication to our clients is probably the biggest differentiator from, from what we're doing, especially as, as times are now, it's very easy to open up a digital agency or a marketing company um, and call yourself an expert. Right. Um, and so I think our longevity and the clients that have stayed with us for a very long time are, are proof that you know, we're, we're caring for their success more than our own success. Talk a little bit about customer service. Okay. Um, so the customer always wins, right? That's, that's sort of basic 101. And, and we had a conversation with one of the people in the office the other day that I think I want to I wanna make sure when we hire people, um, they've, they've worked retail when they were younger. Oh. Um, and even restaurants, because that experience of having to deal with um, uh, unhappy clients and uh, unhappy customers, and how do you do that with a smiling face, and how do you problem solve, and how do you get through um, a difficult day, um, it's something that if nobody's gone through that experience at the retail level or the restaurant level, um, it's a very hard thing to learn later on. And so I think it's it's all problem solving. It's it's can you can you figure out a solution to the problem that's a win-win for everybody. Yes. And, um, and if, if you have a good attitude, that usually helps. So funny that you talk about that because when, I, um, when I'm when i trying to find good people, I have recruited people mm -hmm. from Chili's, from bars, mm -hmm. from, yeah. <laughs> from I, I, I recruit them right on the spot. Yeah. You know, because I, I believe the same thing. Yeah. I mean, if you can deal with someone who has had soup spilled on them, and they walk away happy, then they will do amazing things for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we never have to deal with crisis like that, thankfully. <laughs> um, you know, hot soup being spilled, but but it's it's similar, you know. And, and clients get frustrated sometimes, and that's part of the business. And if, if you're able to roll with the punches and and get through it, and everybody's happy at the end, that's that's the goal. Perfect. Thank you. When you think about, we we talked just a, a little bit about the types of people that you hire and their background. Where do you see your industry going? So this is a two-part question. Where do you see your industry going? How would someone get into that industry? Mm -hmm. And what do you look for when you're hiring somebody aside from a great you know, service background? Sure. Um, it, you know, it's changed for me as, as a business owner and CEO as the business has grown. Um, I used to look for somebody that would complement my skills and, and could could do the things I wasn't very good at. And as the business has grown, I really look for people that they're still problem solvers and they're still able to be self-starters and be self-motivated. Um, but you really have to have a technical understanding of many different things. So um, you, we don't typically look for somebody that's very specialized in whether it be data analytics or graphic design or web programming. Um, we typically find try and find people and hire people that can bounce around and wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. As a small company, it's just a mandatory. And you have to be not only okay with it, you have to thrive in an environment that forces you to um, bounce around and, and just do a lot of different things. Even if somebody doesn't ask you to do it, you just have to be able to recognize that things need to be done. Um, it's not an easy thing to, to find early on when you're interviewing, um, but you find out pretty quickly um, if somebody can handle that that environment. Right, right. What do you think your differentiator is compared to all of the other agencies? Um, you know, I think um, it's a great question. Our biggest differentiator are the actual people in our office. Our agency doesn't have some intellectual property that, that makes us better, faster, more efficient. Um, but what we have is some very smart people that are hardworking and care about the success of our clients. and. That's the biggest difference. Um, we we put all of our energy into focusing on the results and measuring ROI and measuring effectiveness. Uh, and so I think that's that's the biggest differentiator. I think another differentiator is our community involvement. Mm. So being part of the Pasadena entrepreneur ecosystem, innovation ecosystem, I think is a big differentiator as well. Um, my own personal network and the network within the organization um, tends to tends to help our clients as well. 
because we just know a lot of people. Tell, well, tell me a little bit about that. So when we moved the agency to Pasadena three and a half years ago, we made a very conscious decision to get involved with the business community. And Innovate Pasadena had just launched. I found out about it because I wanted to get involved. Um, so I started go attending Friday coffee meetups. I met Andy Wilson. I met a few other people uh, and, and volunteered to just um, help out wherever I, wherever I could. A few weeks into it, they sort of handed me the keys and said, here, can you run this? And <laughs> the coffee meetup? The or coffee the... meetup. Yeah, okay. the coffee meetup. So since then, this is now four and a half years ago. Wow. Uh, we've had weekly meetups with speakers and networking, and it's grown from about 15 people showing up every, every week to 100 to 150 people. Huge. And we have great speakers. The people in attendance are great. And just the opportunity to network within within this environment, uh, it, it's a great differentiator for us. And How has it helped you? Uh, I've met some great mentors. Uh, for me, as our business has grown, I didn't go to school. I didn't go to business school. I didn't go to art school. I didn't you know, I didn't do any of the traditional routes that would take you to running a company. And so I've been able to meet people that are much more successful than I am and be able to pick their brain and ask them for advice and help them guide me to be more successful. That's always interesting. I think mentors, they help you exponentially mm -hmm. in the path that you end up taking. Was there, were there any mentors that you found early on in your career that helped you? There are, uh, and at each, at different phases of the business, I've had mentors that have helped me, and then I'm, I've gone on to find others. Early on, the photographer that I worked for, he was actually a really great mentor. He's, he's the one that taught me how to hustle and do a great job, both on the photography side and the creative side and the customer service side. Uh, so early on, he was, he was a very good mentor for me. As I got into the agency business, uh, one of our very first customers, um, he was the president and CEO of a lighting company. He mentored myself and, and people in the agency to, to help us grow. He believed in what we did. And, and so I, we would just come across people. It wasn't a very formal thing. It was, it was people that I admired and looked up to and just would make myself be next to them. And I would just ask them questions. Uh, and today I, I have a mentor that is very successful in business and ha has had a great career. And I've just pestered him until he, he answers my questions. And, and now, you know, we'll, we'll meet for coffee every, every few weeks or month. And, and I just, I, I talk and gab and tell stories and he does the same. And I just take anything I can from it. Like a sponge. Yes. Every, every CEO that I meet with at Vistage or that I've met on the show from the corner office has had a pivotal moment where, you know, either they had their greatest success or an obstacle that was like, oh gosh, I never want to do this again. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear both from you. Okay. I'll start with the, the um, obstacle. Yeah. So a defining moment, moment for me was three years ago. Uh, so. We started Echo Factory in Upland, California. I live in Pasadena. I was commuting out there. Um, it's not a fun commute. So I moved the business to, to Pasadena. Mm -hmm. um, I've now got a two mile commute, it's great. Uh, we moved into a much bigger office space. We had a lot of employees. We had a lot, um, a lot of overhead. And when we moved the business, I didn't realize how distracting that would be from running the business, finding the building, doing all the build out, moving, and so right when we moved to Pasadena, um, our revenue dropped drastically. We didn't have the work and we had to let, do layoffs. Um, and nothing has been more painful than laying people off because of something I did right. wrong, um, which is not pay attention to the business and, the, and how things are running. Um, we survived it uh, and, and have thrived since then, but it taught me a lesson that if, if I make decisions as the boss, the CEO, the owner of the company that continue to give people jobs and continue for the business to grow, then I'm doing okay. It makes the hard decisions easier. Right. Uh, and so that was, that was pretty pivotal. That was a very painful to have to call multiple people into a room and say, I'm sorry, you know, we have to let you go because I screwed up. Uh, that, was, that was pretty painful. Um, on the success end, 
I would say every day I get another sort of small bit of success. And recently it's when our team is coming to me because they get an email from a client so appreciative of the work we've done and saying, look, this is amazing what you did worked or some appreciation. When we get those emails in, that's, that's my favorite, favorite part of the business. How do you celebrate the success? Um, usually with a standing ovation. Um, we actually have, we have a cowbell in the office that ah! we, we ring. Uh, so that's, that keeps it fun. Um, we do have a bar in the office. Every ad agency needs a good bar. Um, so we pour, we pour drinks for happy hour um, whenever we can. So it's time to go there now it then. Is, it is. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So if I were to dig in a little bit around the path to success, what would be something that you would offer to someone who is perhaps wanting to be, wanting to take the guts that it takes to start their own business? That's a really good question. Uh, I don't know. The, I don't know. I haven't, I don't believe I've actually gotten to the success yet. So I'm still on that journey, but I would say the journey I've taken and fully believe in is just keep at it and you don't give up and the highs and lows of, entrepreneurship or running a business or any adventure you're going on, you have to be able to celebrate the highs and, and realize when they're, when you're at your highest moment that it's going to come back crashing down so that when you're at your lowest, you realize I'll get out of this. It's fine. And you just have to be able to push through it. That's probably the, the one piece of that I've learned. Um, and I keep learning it every day when I have those lows because they happen, uh, is you just keep, keep working and push through it. So it's just pushing through every day and just grind it out. It's, it's a grind. It's not an easy path. Entrepreneurship and running a bit. I mean, it's, it's not for everybody. And, and the people that it's for the people that I see that, that I look up to and say, this person succeeded. I want to be like them. They've gone through these very difficult times and survived. And I always just look at it. Like if you can just survive and realize it's not always going to be like this, we'll get through it. Uh, that's what I found to be the, the best way to succeed. How do you work through some of the challenges that you face daily with that? Um, personally, I use exercise. Um, that's, I ride bikes, road bikes, and mountain bikes. And recently now I go to the gym because my time's a lot more limited. Uh, but exercise as much as I can, it, it just makes me feel better and gets that stress relief and lets you clear your head a little bit. That's probably the best thing that I do. Um, and it also helps me not work <laughs> too many hours. Sure, sure. You know, there are many people in San Gabriel Valley who are starting in their career or, you know, maybe they had a, had a career in one area and then wanted to change it to something else. Mm -hmm. What would be your suggestion to those who want to get into your business? Into the advertising marketing business? Yeah. Uh, I would say just go do it. Um, figure out a way to get in. We have people that work at our agency uh, who have who pestered with emails and just said, "I want to, I want to be in this business. I think I can help you. I think I can be a part of this." And at some point, with enough hustle, like we've given them chances. And so I think that's an opportunity. If, if you don't don't let not having all the knowledge or all the background or all the big resume that should not stop you. Uh, I think. Those are the people that we look for, are people that are just willing to put it all out there and say, look, I'll, I'm going to put my head down, I'm going to work, and I'm going to try my best, and, and that's all I can ask for as an employer and, and of the people of my company. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go back to Innovate Pasadena a little sure. bit, because I, I was sharing with you, I get your coffee, your yeah. Friday coffee <laughs> emails, and... You know, I, I, I would love to understand, I mean, you've, you've had it grow. I know it's a way to also give back to the community, come back to the community. How, what, many people don't know what Innovate Pasadena is. Sure, so Innovate Pasadena is an organization that was started five or six years ago uh, by Andy Wilson to let people know about the innovation and entrepreneurship that's happening in Pasadena. There's such a great history of it uh, that people just don't know about. So. It was started for that reason. The Friday Coffee Meetup has sort of spun out of that and become its own thing. And we have a group of about 10 volunteers that, that just make it happen every single week. Um, and I think 
The success we've had is because of the speakers that we've had come out. We have these amazing CEOs, entrepreneurs, innovators, investors coming to tell their stories. And, and the level of those speakers has drawn more and more people to, to the event. And I think that's, that's where that success has come from. Okay, we've got a little bit of time left. Okay. Tell me about some of the speakers. Like, what it, what, what, what's some of the highlights of the speakers? Um, so early on, uh, a couple years ago, we had Mark Suster out, who's a very well-known uh, VC in LA. That was probably a, one milestone for, for the organization. Uh, recently, we've had uh, Paolo. I was talking to some people this morning. Um, he was an innovator for iRobot, and he's here located in Pasadena, and he has a startup that he's now, now doing, and, and he built the technology around that and is now working on another technology startup. We've had people come in on the virtual reality space and augmented reality. Next week, we have my friend Paul. He's run three incubators across the, across the world. Uh, and so it's, it's people that, that have gone through these amazing journeys and work on, work on amazing businesses that you wouldn't normally get to rub elbows with and have conversations with. Sure. Wow, what a great way to spend a Friday morning. Yeah. You know, I absolutely appreciate our time together. I, I've learned a lot about the advertising world and how you got into it and um, some of the things that you look for. Thanks for having me. Um, no, it was it was wonderful. Um, San Gabriel Valley, I want to thank you all for taking time with us today to learn about the Echo Factory and Mike Schaefer. And we will look forward to seeing you again really soon from the corner office. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.